if if beyonce or oprah winfrey had told themselves there are enough singers there are enough broadcasters in the world why would you want to get in there mm. we wouldn't have, we, the world would have lost their talent right now i am not saying i'm a beyonce or a oprah winfrey or a tony robbins but each of us has something to give to the world and right. us denying ourselves those gifts by tying ourselves to this imposter syndrome and the negative stories or disempowering stories is not doing us justice our loved ones justice and we just you know we'll go to the grave with our dreams in our heart or our potential unlived all right guys welcome to the we transform show a show where we bring real life transformers or people who are influencing transformation and let them tell their story in the first person because we feel everyone can transform and every time is a right time for transformation our guest today is meera rimani joining us all the way from germany meera is a multicultural global leadership expert supporting leaders and teams meera is an alumna of the indian institute of management lucknow and the college of engineering trivandrum she had over 16 years of successful leadership experience across united states india germany and poland in companies such as Procter and Gamble and Amazon across functions such as IT supply chain and consulting she combines her leadership experiences with coaching best practices to support her coaching clients achieve high performance results and superior life quality the impact of her work extends to individuals teams and organizations across the world meera has been supporting executives senior and emerging leaders with one to one group and team coaching in organizations including Apple, Amazon and Google. Today we will speak with Meera about her journey of transformation and know her story. So let's welcome Meera Rimani to the show. Hey Meera, welcome to the show. Hi Alok, thanks for having me with you. Great, I'm so happy and so delighted that you are able to join me today. So guys, let me tell you Meera is an inspiration in LinkedIn. She sends and shares interesting and very very informative post every other day and uh, i'm a big fan of you mira i i really get inspired by all your all your posts and contents which you create so thank you so much for doing that yeah thank you my pleasure it's it's uh, linkedin is where i hang out on a daily basis so i post a lot of what i think is valuable content there so thanks yeah, for watching and reading yeah that's that's incredible so uh, and mira you know uh, uh, i have been listening to your videos they have really added a lot of value uh, you know personally in my life and of course i use some of the inspiration which i get from you to create my videos so i'm telling you this right up uh, right away that yeah, i do that but yeah that's really helpful so mira let let's get started and my first question definitely would be to know a little bit more about you a little bit more uh, beyond what i know about you from linkedin about uh, you know who mira rimani is so let's get started with your story well if i may ask uh, what is the start of your story uh, and what were your dreams and aspirations growing up as a child great question so i'm originally from kerala india and mm-hmm. um, i did my schooling my uh, you know most of my education including my engineering there then i moved to uh, i am lucknow to do my mba so i grew up in a very normal conservative uh, indian background normal household mm-hmm. and i always aspired there was a hunger in me from as a kid and i couldn't really define what it was there was this hunger to let's say expand and see the world and uh, being a girl child in that kind of an environment i didn't have too much of a freedom so a lot of mm-hmm. the decisions centered around having freedom of choice you know freeing you know freeing myself and seeing the world so i always aspired uh, to have um, a career that would take me abroad or, and mm-hmm. help me express my potential you know even if i couldn't as a child put the, that that feeling in those ex- exact words anyway that is the aspiration that me to, that took me to an iim and mm-hmm. after my studies i worked in mumbai for four years icici and cognizant then i met my now husband mm-hmm. there in mumbai and uh, we got married he's german that took me across india towards mm-hmm. europe and okay. we've been we spent the last 10 years in europe partly in poland and for the last five years in germany so okay. you know a lot of times i've had to like 
burned my safety nets when I moved from India to Europe. So if I look at my, uh, let's say, life story, it might look like a movie plot with a lot of romance, a lot of suspense and drama and villains and stuff like that. So it's wow. nice to reminisce. So thank you for taking me through that trip. So wow. just to round that up, I right now live in Munich, Germany. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, after like 16 years of corporate life, I finally bid the corporate world um, adieu as an employee. And now I'm a full-time entrepreneur. I'm mm-hmm. a coach like you introduced me. Mm-hmm. And that's what my calling in life is. And I'm happy that I'm here. Wow. Wow. That's like amazing. It is like a movie really going on. That's very, very inspiring story. So Meera, you know, I really want to know that, you know, you, you did things which really uh, Indian kid really wants to do and you got the best out of it. You know, you go, went to a very good college, of course, and your post-graduation also. Getting into IIM is still a dream to many, many kids out there. Uh, you know, they, it's really something which people really aspire for. Then working on these very, 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 very known global corporates, uh, it's like, you know, quite a dream come true kind of life. Then why this whole transformation to becoming an entrepreneur? You were quite settled, I would say, you know, that's the word we use normally for people who are in job and who have really done good. You were traveling across the world. Uh, You were, um, I think, quite good at your work and uh, everything was like, every piece of puzzle was looking right. So why the transformation and what was the deepest moment? Mm. Wow, yes, everything was perfect, right? Uh, I was married, I was, uh, you know, uh, settled in terms of finances, I was in a good country, I had enough options to go back to India, yes. So uh, the transformation started happening very early on in my career. Again, that uh, feeling from within Rose saying, you know, giving me the feeling that I was not doing something right. That, you know, there were times when I would sit at my laptop, Mm -hmm. uh, even early on in my career, and I would just get bored doing what I do. So initially mm. I thought, oh, you're just being lazy, Mira. If this is life, just do it, right? But that feeling never left throughout those 16 years. Wow. And somewhere around the 10th year mark of my work experience, <laughs> the feeling got even stronger that I couldn't, okay. um, I couldn't, I couldn't ignore it. But still, I, I would just keep it aside and say, you know, just this is life. Just keep your blinkers on and just keep working. You're working. Mm. You're getting. Uh, the next race, promotions, blah, blah, blah. You're doing well. Just what is the big deal, Mira? Just keep doing it. You know, that's mm. what I used to tell myself. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think around 2010, around that time frame, I don't, yeah, 2010, 2012, um, I was working really hard and I had, I was working really, really hard in a sense that I wanted to get to the corner office and stuff like that. So yeah. I would wake up at six o'clock, go straight to the office, come back at eight o'clock at night. Wow. I wouldn't think of breakfast, lunch. I would stuff something into my mouth um so I was just like for me success was everything I wanted to prove to the world and to my parents and my husband that I'm a success that Mm -hmm. nobody can find fault with me that I'm doing it all right I'm like the golden child and then um I had some unfortunate incidents at uh, at work including not so great relationships uh with my manager or great Mm -hmm. relationship with my manager so that was playing on me emotionally as well But overall, I was burning out. It was my responsibility. I was not taking care of myself. And a genetic condition sort of flared up. And Mm -hmm. I ended up having to go to the hospital, have a surgery. The surgery went wrong. There was another surgery to correct the first surgery. I ended up in the ICU. I'm smiling about it now. But actually, in the critical ICU that I was in, there were people dying. Uh, It's scary. It's really scary. Yep. Right. And I was there for a week and I wasn't getting better. And I thought I might just die. <laughs> right. <Seriously. laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, it's not just one day or one incident. Right. So that whole experience of going through the sickness sort of made me made me figure out why am I falling sick? Right. The Western medicine was not able to give me an answer. Mm. It just, you know, the doctors kept prescribing pills and I just keep kept taking them. But I was not getting my answers. I was getting sicker and sicker okay. in the process. And that's what made me shift towards Eastern uh, philosophy, spirituality, that mind-body connection. Okay. Uh, I hit mm-hmm. upon that. Initially, my trained analytical engineering mind would say, no, this is all fluff, mm-hmm. right? There is no mind-body connection. The, you know, the mind is just useless emotions. Just keep it aside. Yes. But mm-hmm. well. That journey, uh, since I was not getting my answers, I was so desperate to find answers. I grew deeper in my, you know, my, my curiosity. 
took me mm-hmm. deeper into indian um, you know indian science ayurveda getting to know the mind body connection like i said and i got a lot of answers there wow. i really figured out that the mind and body do have a connection and that spirit is a real thing and you need to take care of yourself at the basic physical level and at an emotional and spiritual level one needs to be feeding the emotional and spiritual levels as well one of the biggest ways of doing that is by doing work which you find fulfilling which you find yes. meaningful and up until then a lot of my days would look like 80% of the day would be handling excel sheets word documents strategy mm-hmm. documents presentations and 20% would be what i really love doing which is working with my team mm. mentoring them coaching them probably they have some trouble talking through with them mm-hmm. so this experience of mind body connection this whole experience made me realize i need to tip it i need to okay. have at least 80% people connection mm-hmm. and looking back at my life i looked at the highlights of my life i saw that where i was working with people directly face to face and connectedness where i was talking to them about human issues that human connection was where mm-hmm. i lit up mm-hmm. so and and that, that really gave you that whole clue of what you really you need to work on wow that's amazing yes it gave me a clue and i want to give a little bit more of details because uh, this is something a lot of people will struggle with so i realized that coaching is a good area for me because i'm i seem to have some skills in it people seem to like it but obviously the imposter syndrome came in it mm. asked me hmm, neera there are so many coaches in the world why would you be any different right oh, yes happens right yes. why do you want to add to the noise there are so many of them and how will you even be successful amongst all these people and then uh, finally i happened to hear a podcast from mari forleo she is an okay. american motivational you know entrepreneur let's say mm-hmm. and she said something around this topic she said if if beyonce or oprah winfrey had told themselves there are enough singers there are enough broadcasters in the world why would you want to get in there mm. we wouldn't have, the world would have lost their talent right now i am not saying i'm a beyonce or a oprah winfrey or a tony robbins but each of us has something to give to the world and right. us denying ourselves those gifts by tying ourselves to this imposter syndrome and the negative stories or disempowering stories is not doing us justice our loved ones justice and we just you know we'll go to the grave with our dreams in our heart or our potential unlived oh this is like this is a very golden nugget you just gave me you know uh, and and there's two things here one um, personally i have been struggling with this uh, for quite some time in my life and i also know a lot of people a lot of people who have two challenges one they also have this feeling that something is not going right in life you know i'm really doing okay good fine i am getting my finances in place but i'm not happy but you know many of us don't go out and seek those answers that's the first thing and when we do sometimes this whole imposter syndrome surround us in a very funny way it happened with me you know uh, you know right when i made my switch from my sales career to facilitation uh, i i felt uh like this for a long period of time in fact when i started i went to singapore for my training it was like a four month of formal training to understand facilitation and i guess throughout that period i felt like an outsider i felt like okay i may not be physically very fit like the facilitators available there who were really doing good uh, that was one side of it second maybe i was feeling i don't have the right communication skills to really um, you know give that message as a facilitator and there were many the list is long but i have been through this for many uh, for much longer time than i anticipated but then i started reading about it i wanted to know about it and i, me- I met somebody who was in th- who was doing therapy and then i got this word i was not even aware that there is something mm-hmm. called imposter syndrome you know and now that we know about these words so why i'm telling this because a lot of people also don't know what is imposter syndrome so mm-hmm. i want to know from you and i see you writing about it as well so if you can tell us a little bit about imposter syndrome and maybe some uh, you know tips on how to work around it alok thank you for sharing your story it is very inspirational and i'm happy that you managed to get over it uh, none of us are really over it that voice does resonate it does keep coming up but glad that you tamed the monster and mm-hmm. we have the gift that you share with the world <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> so thank you for that 
Um, so yeah, coming back to imposter syndrome, the definition in simple terms, it is that feeling of not being good enough for. Yeah. So simply not good enough. I'm simply not good enough for doing whatever I've been asked to do or whatever I plan to do or whatever I dream to do. So a lot of people, for example, don't raise their hands for promotions or don't ask for promotions because they don't feel ready yet. You yes. see, I'm, you know, and, um, or uh, a lot of people have dreams of entrepreneurship. They want to launch a new product or service and they hold themselves back saying, who am I to do this? So this, if you hear ever a voice in your head saying that, who am I? Am I good enough? These are all voices of the imposter syndrome. And like, so what the just, hell I'm doing here? You know, I'm an outsider, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't belong here. Belong, exactly. that's the word. Yeah. yeah, like you rightly said, I don't belong here. What am I doing here? So if these sentences or variations of this you hear in your head, then mm -hmm. that's the imposter syndrome knocking. So uh, there are several ways of dealing with it. One is, of course, gaining awareness. So over a period of time, like, like practicing lifting a weight in the gym, you, you get better and better at lifting higher weights. You just get better and better at spotting the imposter syndrome. Mm. So, you know, probably you can start with at the end of the day, ah, today, when did the imposter syndrome show up? Probably that's one exercise. Or at the beginning of the day, I'm going to really watch out for the imposter syndrome come up today. I'm going to intercept it. A lot of awareness. It. Yeah. Right. Getting so awareness, awareness into... yes. Okay. Whichever way you can do it. And with that, when you grow that muscle, when the imposter syndrome suddenly attacks, you know, oh, yes, now you're here, my dear friend. I know you. I've seen yeah. you. We know each other. So why don't you take a break till I finish this? You know, you can actually mm -hmm. talk to the imposter syndrome like a third, second person and say, take a seat. I'm going to finish this work. I'm going to finish mm -hmm. this presentation. I'm going to put my email in and ask for that promotion or raise or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I'll come and talk to you. <laughs> By the time you get back, they might have just gone. Yeah. But it's just, and also, also um, reinforcing your mind with such positive messages, right? What mm -hmm. is great about you, right? What are people talking about you? Obviously, there are people telling great things about you and me. Mm -hmm. And really remembering that I actually have a folder of things that my clients have said about me. So on tough days, I go back and read it. So it's like Wonderful. I have received a bouquet of flowers or acknowledgement. So those are some things. So really gather all the things that are great about you, acknowledge your skills, acknowledge what mm -hmm. others have said about you, even mm -hmm. more than what others talk about you. You have to really say that, you know, I'm doing my best in the world. I am not bad. I'm actually good. I've done the best that has come my way. Or I'm, if I've made mistakes, I'm trying to learn from them and doing my best in every situation. I'm human. I make mistakes, but I am good. I'm, and my dreams are worthy. The fact that I have a dream means that I can achieve it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very right. profound. In fact, you know what I did? <laughs> something very funny, uh, Meera, that um, when this was happening really uh, in my head all the time, and I really told something funny to myself that, hey, who are you scared of? You know, when you say these people, not me, versus where this conversation is coming from, right. who are they? They're humans, Alok, and mm -hmm. humans like you, and they make equal mistakes. They are equally right. scared. They do all the things which you pro probably do, maybe a little different. But uh, then, then why this whole thing? And I really bring in that wisdom once I got from uh, one of my mentors. I was I was doing theater very early in my life, and oh, wow. uh, I was yeah. a little uncomfortable going on the stage, the physical stage where you have a lot of people in front of you. And um, um, there was a very difficult dialogue which I had in one of the plays, and he said that, "Alok." you will feel uncomfortable. You will feel that whole feeling of, uh, or nervousness of going in front of the camera or audience till the time you feel that you are getting judged. Mm -hmm. Till the time you have a feeling that they are comparing you against somebody else, maybe a performer before you or after you, something like this. And the moment you come to a stage where it does not matter anymore, you don't even think about that you're getting judged, you become real. And people love real people. People love people who make mistakes, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's you know, I, I use that. Uh, I use that, uh, and it really worked for me. I guess you know, mm -hmm. um, Mira. Another thing which comes in mind is that, and for people who really feel that they're not good enough, the single video on YouTube which broke all the records is Gangam Style. And when it was researched about why it went so viral and why it is one of the most popular videos, because it's not a perfect video. This guy is not perfect. He does not dance perfect. 
he sings in a weird way is this video is completely weird and the world mm-hmm. loved it we loved original we loved weird <laughs> So yeah, we want natural, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all, yeah. I think uh, the world is done with the done and dusted ways of everything polished. We want to yeah. know what is real. Right. Right. Because and and, and if, yeah, and though all those who are real and they feel they are weird, congratulations, you are in the right, uh, you know, zone. Just go play it out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Golden nuggets there too. Thank you. Right. So, so Mira, you know, you have uh, you have went to that crossroad of life where things were like fine. and it was going good but you had to make a choice and i guess you there was a phase where you were hospitalized and you got that moment of truth uh, there uh, you know when many of us get chances like this even happened to me i i got admitted uh, in hospital only two times in my life and both are uh, due to dengue and uh, you know i was so my mosquitoes are very favorite and you know they find me anyways wherever i go so uh happened to me twice and you know those moments no matter how many people are around you you also get your your own time you know when you're on you know are you my twin that uh, mosquitoes get attracted to you it's the same case for me oh yes it does you know and any in, in a room if i'm sitting in, in a room and there are five people and there is a mosquito which enters he will find me out of those five people that happens you know we'll have a mosquito standoff <laughs> yeah we should do that right so you know uh, this these are those times were really reflective and you know i really got to you know decide what i need to really do next in those moments i don't advise people to go and get hospitalized to take mm-hmm. a realization like this you can go meditate as well it's equally uh, uh, you know good but yes um, you know a lot of us go to that crossroad a lot of us want to make that choice a lot of us feel that something heavy is right there this is a feeling it is not real but you know it exists what is your advice to everybody who is in some way seeking purpose not so sure where it is but yes looking out for it what should they do um yeah i'll try to answer best as much as i can so what do you say about a lot of people are going through that phase in their lives where they want to know they want to do something that is purposeful Mm-hmm. uh in their lives and you would not imagine men and women who we would consider extremely accomplished and i have a few um, who would reach out to me because they want my support because they like you know we've achieved so much but we have that feeling of emptiness mm. or uh, that lack of meaning so or something that they want to do they are not really sure and like you said we we, we you and i hope that people don't reach that hospitalization to realize yep. that there are knocks and nudges along the way from our soul or spirit whatever we can call it that says this is not it pay attention so you don't have to be bored like me for 10 years to actually take that call right so uh, if somebody is going through that then it's time to actually pay attention um now how would you make that shift right so those are you know those could be uncomfortable for people but most uncomfortable is if you if you don't pay attention to it yes so some ways of paying attention that help me is actually reflecting by yourself uh, or with the help of somebody else so really reflect okay what is that nagging feeling feeling try and really deep dive and understand what within me is seeking expression mm. right what within me wants what is that i'm inspired to do in a sense and this could be a lot unnerving because none of us are taught in schools or colleges how to do this self reflection yes. right yes. and that is where it always is helpful when you go to a coach or a mentor or somebody a therapist who can actually help you take those first steps in terms of really understanding who are you as a person what do you really want to do what will what is that thing that really makes you joyful and happy so in my ordeal i had a coach for coach who was helping me and she was really good Okay. and she helped me um, ask a lot of questions to myself uh, and one of the questions she asked me is mira what do you want to be in your life what is that goal that you have and i said i want to be ceo in 10 years 20 okay. years and she said why and i said you know that is the ultimate um, mark of success she said why is that the ultimate mark of success so mm. she kept asking me so many why's for instance or so many of these questions i was actually initially very irritated Hmm. but at the end of the conversation i realized that you know some of the goals i set for myself are not even mine 
Yeah. That is what the society or our parents, I mean, they love us, but our society has conditioned us to think if we don't reach these, we are failures. We yeah. are life on earth is wasted. Correct. Right. So it's, it's taking a step back and saying, no, what do I really want to do with my life? Right. And when we actually pay attention to that, start that reflection, it has a snowball effect. It's not mm -hmm. that one day you reflect and in 20 minutes, you'll know, okay, this is what I want to do. Impossible. But it's an, yeah, it's an ongoing reflection. You take a step towards reflecting. You say, mm, I'm curious about this. How about I take that course? Or how about if I want to start a gardening business, how about trying to have a few plants in my balcony? Something mm -hmm. like that. You start mm -hmm. with baby steps. Then quickly that will, I wouldn't use the word quickly, in a sense that over a period of time, it will snowball. And it won't take that much time is something I experienced. And, um, you know, you've got to be patient with the process and it will eventually move up. It will not take decades for it to flourish, but you've got to have patience. It's that balancing act. You have to have patience. And when you have patience and faith in the process, it will evolve in a very steady manner. Mm. And help is really, I'm not saying this because you and I are coaches and I'm like sneakily putting in a sales pitch. <laughs> But really the work you and I do as coaches, especially like you and me who have integrity and love for the work we do yeah. after going through the kind of crisis we went through, we yes. have a lot of integrity. And uh, I think we'll be able to help people this understand so, themselves. Yes, this is so true and so relevant in today's time. Meera, I also feel that uh, all the good coaches uh, and mentors out there have gone through that grill of life. And when they have done that, naturally the realization comes that hey can i save somebody else not doing it you know from not going because through this i can't see you go through that pain right i want yes. to help you and uh, you know that's why a lot of people are out there to help and, and it's it's also i call it accelerated growth because you know mm -hmm. a good coach and a mentor can accelerate you uh, to where your potential is they will get you what you deserve uh, what you are really meant for you know what is already within you it's like, you know, completely unwrapping the real gift and uh, you evolve. But it, you know, these are big words and people have a lot of videos around. But, you know, a real handholding is a real handholding. Nothing can, nothing can uh, be, uh, I'm not getting that word, can replace that. Yes, exactly. And this is exactly what a new client of mine, a new client signed up with me last week. And she mm -hmm. said, I've read enough books. I've seen enough videos. But all those books remain generic. What is specific to me to me uh, yes. will come to me only when I address it myself one-to-one -one with somebody. It's like getting something tailor-made for yourself. Yeah. Like what are those kinks in my armor? Uh, what are those personal triggers I have when imposter syndrome could come in? Or what are those disempowering stories I'm telling myself? What is specific to my life scenario? scenario? What are my unique opportunities, challenges, gifts? So, yeah. That's so that's either have that reflection by yourself, which is difficult. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. But mm. always having, let's say, an expert who has credentials in that area help you will, like you said, accelerate and catalyze that process. And mm. you will make fewer mistakes in that mm. sense and not waste a lot of time, effort, money, etc. in the process. You don't have to go through 10 years. You might get there faster with the help of somebody who can handhold you. It's very, very important, Meera. Since you asked me, what can people do in terms of, uh, you know, fulfilling their potential, finding out what their potential is? This mm -hmm. is one of the strongest and most powerful ways I would recommend. Wow. Yeah, of course, of course. And we should all follow that because I guess I've, I've already spoken to a couple of people uh, on the same topic. And every time this comes across that, you know, people should seek out help and it is available there. There are people who want to help. But if you are not willing to accept the gift, receive the gift how would you ever yeah. get it so it's about opening up and going all out and doing that so Meera while we're talking about coaching and helping others I would like to know what are you doing now how are you helping people how are you serving uh, after your transformation uh, tell us something about that right uh, I work with individuals as well as teams in organizations mm -hmm. okay. uh, on a variety of topics uh, it could be something related to leadership and within leadership, it could be such topics as how do you really, it's again expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. what, what is stopping you from expressing yourself? A lot of people, even if they're successful leaders, still have imposter syndrome. They don't speak up enough or they are not visible about their work. A lot of women especially says, hey, I, I'll do my hard work. Other people will then notice. And then, um, you know, they sort of complain when 
others go further than them and you can't blame the system as well i am a big proponent of taking ownership hmm. right how do you take ownership and grow your career as a leader how do you show up how do you communicate with others there is a lot of conflict these days which is unnecessary there is a lot of friction a lot of time money energy wasted um, because pe- people are not taught this is unfortunate we are not taught how to communicate with each other yes. what is empathetic communication even if you're doing a presentation are you able to think of what does your audience really need are you making that presentation suited to your audience will they get something out of it or are you just going on a monologue so there is a lot of communication essentials that also teach in terms of one to one as well leaders of teams how do you understand your teams how do you raise performance how do you make people motivated how do you balance um, you know results with empathy right yeah. so a lot of things like that is what i help people with and individuals um, a lot on imposter syndrome so okay. imposter syndrome is probably an umbrella term within that comes uh, things like uh, perfectionism like mm. if i'm not 100% ready yet i will not put this product out into the world and there are a lot of examples where you you're talking to me now you're talking to me meera so i have been i think i am still under it i am still under it and to be very honest i was working on a program uh, which was supposed to go out on the first week of october it is still not out and i'm not even working deeply on it i'm booking but again that whole perfection is just not arriving so you're talking to a victim right now <laughs> and all of us are victims i have my own as well right but it's uh, you, you know you and i being trained we might be able to acknowledge it much earlier and intercept it and turn that around yeah. perfectionism is a big thing and uh, yeah a lot of people wait till they are the best till they apply for a job for example yes. women again a classic example is mm. if there is a job uh, job role that is listed there are 10 requirements women will go through the list 10 15 times and find that one point where they are not 100% good at they strike off all the other nine points mm. they won't apply mostly with women ha- might happen to men as well so mm-hmm. um the so i work a lot on dealing with uh, you know other topics related to imposter syndrome like perfectionism or the disease to please we have such struggle setting boundaries and saying no and we take on so much work and there is stress we say that it's a time management issue or a stress management issue but at the end of the day it's about setting boundaries with ourselves with our colleagues with our family members how much can i take on otherwise you're setting expectations with other people that they can keep piling stuff on you yeah. even if it's not within your role on responsibility true uh, so those are some of the things i help people with i think my biggest calling in life is to bring out my potential and i think mm. part of that is helping others bring out their potential oh. because the, there is so much beauty there is so much in all of us that if we all are able to express that there is a lot less frustration in the world and if yeah. we communicate more uh, consciously with others there is a lot less tension in the world whether it's one to one whether it's in a company whether it's in a community whereas between communities and a political context i think mm-hmm. the world can be a lot better place when we start looking at ourselves and expressing ourselves more authentically that's a, that's such a noble intent meera and i wish you all the best uh, i hope a lot of people take this help from you and really grow in life by the way guys if you really want to get in touch with meera i will share her details the social handles in the comment section uh, so that you know can get in touch with her she is always willing to help and meera you know why you were telling about this whole the whole pleasing thing the disease to please i just did the episode uh, you know this week uh, which was with uh, mohsin uh, and he was telling me a story where this whole emotion of getting in a company or getting along with people went so strong in his life that he resorted to substance abuse because the mm. community around him was doing it it was the disease to please in a different way which was which was fatal to him as mm-hmm. in his life uh, so people go to that extent to do that yeah wow that is yeah and people start smoking or into alcoholism and stuff like that oh wow okay i'm i'm glad he pulled himself out of it this happening it can happen to lot. anybody he took a mentor as well i can again somebody helped him pull out because it is not easy to do that to yourself uh, you don't even realize you're getting into a trap and you so easily get into it sometimes yeah. 
it's good to have, get that external unbiased opinion. And it's not that you need to take it for your whole life, especially mm. when you're struggling and you're down in the dumps. It's good to get a helping hand to pull you out. And then you stabilize a bit, then you're able to take care of yourself. You might not need a mentor or yeah. um, you know, coach anymore, but help yourself because there is so much potential in each of us. Right. Don't, yeah, of course, don't be where you are. You know, if you really feel something is not right, go out and change it. That's incredible, Meera. I guess, you know, you have added so much value to our show today. Uh, and uh, I guess I learned a lot and maybe I'll be your uh, one of your students very soon if I feel so. I'm really getting this urge that um, probably, you know, I should hire you as my coach because I need to learn a lot from you. Uh, but yes, uh, for all those who really want to get in touch with Meera, uh, find her details in the description. Meera, thank you so much for joining us today in this show. It was really a pleasure talking with you. Uh, thank you, Alok. Uh, I mean, like I said before as well, you are a wonderful host, interviewer, and I would be delighted to have you as a client. Uh, I love your zest for life and your personality. <laughs> so it would be lovely. And also fellow viewers, I would, be, I would love to connect with you. The best place to find me is LinkedIn along with the other links that Alok has uh, put in the comment section. Do reach out. I'd be happy to be of support for you. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining me. Thanks a lot.